Trust me, I know what I'm doing. This would happen if I tried to defuse bomb, but this is not a bomb. This is an atomic force microscope, which is used to study material surfaces. The image of the surface is obtained by scanning at a very sharp tip. When the tip is further away, then Van der Waals attractive forces apply between the tip and the surface. However, if the tip is close enough to the surface, then electrostatic repulsive forces apply. The tip is attached to a cantilever, and if the tip interacts with the surface T10, then the cantilever bends. The force needed to bend the cantilever is described by Hooke's law, where the force directly depends on the spring constant and cantilever deflection. The cantilever deflection is monitored with the laser beam, which is focused on the cantilever, and the light is reflected into a detector. If the cantilever bends, then the position of the laser beam changes. The surface is scanned with the sharp tip, with the help of a piezo tube, which can bend or stretch depending on the electric potentials applied. The scanning can be done either by moving the sample while the tip holder is stationary or by moving the tip while the sample is stationary. This method allows to obtain three-dimensional images of the studied surfaces, as each pixel also has a height coordinate. The lateral resolution of the images is around 30 nanometers due to convolution but the vertical resolution can be up to 0.1 nanometers. There are three basic AFM imaging modes, contact, non-contact and tapping mode. In the case of contact mode, the tip is in contact with the surface. This is good for studying hard surfaces. In the case of non-contact mode, the tip is vibrating with a constant frequency above the surface. This mode is useful when studying soft or sticky surfaces. In the case of tapping mode, the tip is closer to the surface and vibrates with a higher amplitude. In the lowest point of the trajectory, the tip is briefly touching the surface. The greatest advantage of AFM over SEM is the ability to study the height of surface details. This also allows measuring the surface roughness, which is very important when characterizing material surfaces. The data analysis program makes it very easy to study the sites of interest. First, a line is drawn across the studied surface detail, and then the height and width can be measured by simply selecting the start and end point. Thanks for watching and leave your comments, suggestions and questions below.